And that, so breath of joy standing is to have the arms coming up and John is with me, my husband, is to, um, I'm gonna demonstrate, is this one where we come up and then you exhale, bend the knees and you fall. But before we do, so we're gonna do 20 reps of those, but before we do, I wanna just start with a nice stretch right in through the chest by interlacing the fingers and taking a breath in and gazing up and opening through the chest, the shoulder blade comes back. And then you can exhale, come right out to the side. So you're lengthening out from the sideways, beautiful breath. And breath in, draw all the way up. Exhale over to the other side, keeping the elbows back. Breathing in again, lift, extend, and then exhale, come out to the side. And again, you're keeping the ribs back so you're not turning to open through the sideways. One more breath there, really reaching out. And then breathing in, come on back up. And then exhale over to the other side, lovely. Keeping the ribs back as you lift from the rib cage. And then you can take the arms down. Great, so we'll come into breath of joy, 20 repetitions. Here we go, breathing in, bring the arms up. Exhale and bend from the side. It's a breath in and exhale, bend. Breathe in, lift, exhale. Breathe in, exhale. Breathe in, lift the eyes, exhale. Breathe in, and exhale. Breathe in, exhale. Lift the eyes, exhale. Bend in the knees, and exhale. The core comes in on your exhale, pull your abdominal wall back. Breathing in, here's 10, exhale. Breathing in, exhale. Breath in, Exhale, in, exhale, in, and exhale, in, exhale, in, exhale, and four more, breathing in, exhale, breath in, exhale, last two, inhale, exhale, and inhale, and exhale, and now let's just take the arms up, and you can roll the shoulder blades back so you're opening through the chest. I'm lifting the chin to open right in through the shoulders. And then you can take the arms, just release. Have your feet just a little wider than hips. Let the arms dangle and rotate from side to side, keeping the rib cage open, keeping the chest lifted. Steady breath. Letting the arms come right around and slap. And a couple more. And come on right back to your center. Okay, very good. Now, um, just coming with the hands right onto the back, press the palms into the low back and lift the ribs. Now knit your rib cage in, so you're gonna lift the eyes, press the elbows back, draw up from the ribs. And then exhale and keep the knees bent slightly and fold forward into your forward fold. Now take the hands down towards the feet. Pull up from the bum bone so you're shifting towards the base of the toes. I'm looking up to flatten the upper back and to reach up from the top of the head. And feel all four corners of the feet. Let the head fall as you pull up through the legs. Let your head dangle to lengthen through the back of the neck. And then one more time, one more deep breath to pull up from the core. And then let's breathe in, draw the arms up. Bring the arms up to the side, or reverse swan up. So you lift, press the palms together, and then you can exhale the arms right back to center. Okay, now we'll come right down onto all fours. And you can have your bolster really handy. Close by. And we'll start off in the position with the palms right underneath the shoulders. Now the knees are hip width apart. We start with an in-breath, gaze up, lift the eyes, arc the back, and then you can exhale and feel like you're pressing your palms right through the floor. And then breathe in, gaze up, lift the eyes, and exhale around, pressing the tops of the feet into the floor. Breathe in, gaze up. And exhale. Breathe in, gaze up, lift the eyes. And exhale. 
Two more, breathe in, gaze up, lift the eyes. And then exhale. And last one, breathe in, gaze up. And then exhale. Now a really nice stretch to do for the calf is to take the hands forward six inches, take the left heel back and then press that heel back and you press right onto the ball of the foot and lengthen that heel out. Just pull back from your core. You're looking slightly ahead to lengthen the spine. Good. Reaching. And now you can come on the top of that foot. So you point the toe and then you roll to the outside of that hip. So I'm rolling over to the left and dropping that left hip and pulling up through the waist. So you're gonna stretch gently through that left side of your hip. Draw back to your center. One more time, tuck the toes under and reach that heel out. So you lengthen through the back of the leg. So you get a really good extension out there. Good. And then take that left leg down, take the right leg out. Once again, reach out through that heel, press, stretch right into the calf. Core is strong as you pull back. Reach, reach. Now you can come on the top of the foot, roll to the outside, drop that right pocket area, dropping down. Breath. And then you can draw all the way back up. Now you're bringing the knees right underneath the hips. And then come on right into circles. Circling around, just make your bum like a stir stick as you come around. Breathing steadily. And then come on in the other direction. Coming around. Breath. And then you can come back into the center. Okay, now we'll tuck the toes under. And if you can, sit right back on the heels so that you're getting a stretch in through the feet. And if you need to, you can always, of course, bring your hands forward so that you're getting that stretch more gently in through the base of the toes. Yeah, it's kind of like a negotiation there. Now notice if you can pull the baby toe side under a little bit more because it tends to slip out. And then come back again. And just keep the nice tall spine. Come into the original rise of the arms up overhead. Lift from the rib cage. Get the shoulder blades sliding down as you press the palms to the ceiling. And looking up as you breathe. Breath, shoulders down. And then you can gently release the hands down. And now just come on onto the tops of the feet. And then we're going to tip over to the right side. You're going to have your heels tucked under and we'll tip over to your right. And I'm actually going to mirror you, so I'll come over to that side too. And you're going to hold on to the top of the foot and then lift from the rib cage and extend out from that right side. So you keep the shoulder blade back as you get a wonderful lift out. And you pull up from the rib cage, getting that rise. The eyes are looking up. Get your shoulder back. <clears throat> Deep breath. And then you can come down. Great. Now we're going to take this top left leg over. And you can pull that heel in tight so that you're sitting up tall and you've got both bum bones down. Now I find I've got to take this heel out in order to get the right, the left side down. So if you need to do that, that'll just get nice and tall and lift it from the ribs. That's good. Now rise from the ribs and pull yourself up as much as you can so you're bending your elbows and see if you can pull that heel in a little snugger so you get right to the front of the bum. And then come on on the outside edge of that foot so I've turned the foot in and then exhale and fold forward as much as you can. Release the weight of the head. Go into your breath. <clears throat> Breathing in and out through the nose. Keep reaching forward. And again, just let the head dangle. Breathing down into the low belly. And two more breaths. One more breath. Good. 
And now you can breathe in, lift the chin, walk the hands all the way back in, and then you can uncross that leg. Now take that left heel in front and take the right foot in right onto the inside thigh. Pull back from the toes and then square right out over that left leg and extend out over the leg as you draw back from the baby toe side and reach forward from the waist. Have that right foot pressing onto the inside of the thigh to let that knee rotate out. And as you reach forward, reach more with the chest as opposed with the top of the head. And you're looking up towards the foot and you keep lifting from your low back. On your exhale, you can pull the core in to get that rise right from the belly, do a little giggle, a little <laughs> to get the core to engage, to get that reach forward. And then you can breathe in, scaffold back up, just walking the hands in. And then you can take that foot back in, rotate to the other side, and then you'll hold on to the outside of the ankle. So you've got that left hand, that right hand under, and then you lift, lengthen out from your left side, get a rise from the rib cage, keep the ribs knitted in so you can lengthen out from that side, keep your breathing steady. Breath. Once again, really rise, lift, breath. And then you can take that hand down and now take that top right leg over, snug that heel in as tight as you can. And if you need to take this underside heel out so you can get down evenly in through the hips. And then lifting from the rib cage, hug yourself up so you get a wonderful lift coming right up from the low back. And you feel the shoulders drawing back to get your lift. Stay with your exhale, pulling the core in so you can really lift up. Then from there, come on, on the outside of that top foot, breathing in, and then exhale and extend forward. Let your head dangle. Just stay with your breathing. Breathing in and out from the nose. On your exhale, pulling the abdominal wall in as you reach forward with the chest. Breath. Good. And then on your next in breath, you can walk your hands back in. And then bringing that heel out, draw the left heel in onto the inside of the thigh, let that knee rotate out. And then reaching forward with the chest, draw the toes back as you extend out. And keep your shoulders squared as you reach out over that leg. Keep drawing up from the rib cage as you extend forward. Keep pulling back from the toes as the heel reaches out. And one thing that I've, I've developed the habit of doing is pulling the big toe separately apart and seeing if I can pull it back more. That pulls up the midline of your inner thigh. So I've noticed that I've just kind of helped to develop the toe separation ability to strengthen the arches. So if you can pull that big toe back, that will help to pull up through the inner thigh more, if that can happen. And then you gently breathe in and come on back up. And then we'll take that leg in and you can take the soles of the feet together, but bring the feet out quite far. And then with your thumbs just on the inside, grab under. Now here's where you can hold on to your shins or potentially your feet and then pull yourself forward right from the low back. The elbows are bending down on the inside in order to get that leverage forward. And you use the pull on the feet to draw you forward from your low back as your head falls. Go into your breathing, in and out through the nose. And the other thing I love to do here is to, um, when I'm down, is to really reach forward with the chest and also to walk the bum bones back. As I walk the bum bones back, then they can get more of a stretch in through the low back. So just notice if that makes sense. So that's gonna straighten the legs a little. And then you can get forward more from your low back and your head falls. You go right into your breath. Reaching forward. Nice deep breaths.
Now, releasing the hands, slowly draw the hands back in, and then you can take your bolster, and you can draw that bolster halfway down the mat, just actually about one-third way down the mat, so you've got two-thirds of the bottom end, and then you can come right up to the top of the bolster. Now, take your feet as wide as the mat, and take your elbows right over the shins. Now, hold on to the feet, Pressing the feet down, press the backs of the arms into the shins. Take an in-breath, gaze up, lift the chin, and now once again, exhale and let yourself round. Coming into a nice, strong compression in through the lower abdomen, GI tract. And the head is falling, so you stretch right through the back of the neck. And stay with your breathing. Keep that reaching forward. And again, just keep the shit, the uh, backs of the arms pressing into the shins to get you forward even more. Very active pose. Again, the head dangles. Breathing in and out. And then you can breathe in and lift and come all the way back up. Now extend the legs straight out. Reach out from the heels. Pull back from the toe base. Make sure you're right at the top of the uh, bolster. And then as you lean forward, lift the chest bone so you can extend forward and pull them right up from the low back as your baby toe side comes back. And keep reaching out with your chest. Shoulders are dropped. On your exhale, you're pulling the abdominal wall back as you reach. Stay with your breathing. Two more breaths. And then you can breathe in and draw back up. We'll take the right leg across to come into spinal twist. Take that heel right up to the bolster. Reach out with the left foot and then taking that left hand behind, turn the right arm back, turn and gaze to the right, and then using the fingertips, if you can, on the floor, right on the tips, and then press into the floor and turn and gaze over that right shoulder. And five deep breaths. Keeping the rise from the rib cage. Again, steady breaths. Good, and two more deep breaths. Keeping the rise. And now on your next in breath, we're going to repeat the tip forward that you come on the outside edge of this foot. So you'll have your right knee coming forward slightly. Draw your toes back and then extend out over the leg. You're using your hands. To, to press down so that you can reach forward right from the base of your spine. Pull your toes back, reaching forward, and keep your breath steady. Again, really reaching out. Contract strongly through the abdominal wall to reach it forward. Squeezing right down into the base of the belly. And then on your next in-breath, you can come all the way back up. So I'm hoping you can keep the hips really square here so that you're not turning to one side. And, um, and then just notice if you can straighten a little bit more. So you're going to pull right up from the bottom of the spine. The shoulder blades are down. And then take that right knee up again and just hug the knee in and then square yourself to the front. So just all little maneuvers to get pulled in through the lower uh, belly more and you can get more of a lift from your back and stay with your breathing. Okay. And then gently uncross that right leg. Now, if you, as you have the heels reached out, just do a little bend of knees, bop up and down so you can release right in through the backs of the legs. And stay lifted from your low back and now you can cross your left leg, bring that left leg up, and cross the leg over, come nice and high, pulling in, 
Take the right arm down low. Draw that left arm back as the shoulder blade comes back, potentially using the fingertips to lift and to push you up with that right heel pressing forward, toes pulling back. Stay lifted from the rib cage. Nice and rough, really lifting from the bottom of the spine, keeping the breathing steady. See if you can lift a little higher. Feel the weight evenly on both bum bones in the bolster. And one more breath. And now you can come back to the front and then come on on the outside edge of that foot so the knee will turn out a little bit. Make sure this right heel is straight forward and out. And using your hands on the bend of the elbow, really opening to the back of the right knee, extend forward over the leg. Good, so you're getting a good reach from the low back. Keep your shoulder blades sliding down as you reach forward. And staying with your breathing. Keep the toes pulling back. Reaching. Once again, shoulders are back. And one more breath. And then you can breathe in and draw all the way back up. Now uncross that left foot. Take both of the, the feet together once again and pull your feet in close. Come right to the top of the bolster and then hold on to the shins and pull yourself tall so you're lifting from the low back and gaze up as the elbows bend down a little or a lot so you can get the shoulder blades sliding down. Now as you get that lift, good, you'll feel that nice tall back. You take an in-breath, lift the eyes, and then exhale and tuck your chin looking down. Breathe in from the nose and really keep the bum bones down. Keep lifting right to the front of the bum. And breath. Keeping the lift. Again, attempt to stay right to the front of the bum bones. And one more breath. Let's do one more just to get that lift from the bottom of the spine. Okay, that's good. Now, um, I just want to pause and check in here. Um, John, could you feel that in the low back more? Yeah, just breathe this a bit. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Shirley, I'm just wondering if it's basically you're pulling to the fronts of the bum bones, and I'll show you from the front. We're really attempting to, um, to pull forward so that the elbows come back, and you'll feel more space in between the ribs and the hips. And this will help you to come to the inside of the hips, and then more of a lift from the bottom of the spine as the shoulders come back. And that will help to get into the um, spinal muscles and more of a lift from the bottom of the back. So that's the space we're going for. Now then you can take your feet out further and have the heels together. The toes are turned out and then hold on to your shins and come on forward. So you're keeping your elbows back and you keep that lift from the rib cage exactly the same way. Take an in breath, lift the eyes and then you can exhale and tuck the chin once again, coming into deep breaths. Breathing in and out through the nose with that tucked chin, with that lifted back, and the rib cage pulling in. Keep the shoulders back. And then you can gently release. Good. Now you can take the legs straight out and then once again, shake up through the backs of the legs and the knees bopping up and down so you can release right back there. And then we'll come right down onto your backs. So from here, you can have your bolster halfway down the mat and then come on right down onto the low back. Let your low back be right at the top of the bolster as a let your Weight of your head come down and the arms are resting to the sides. Completely let go. Feel your shoulder blades under you. Feel the wonderful lift 
right out from the bottom of your spine. Palms are rolled up to the ceiling and the fingers naturally curl. Feel the shoulders back, chest is open. Feel the throat relax. And feel the weight of the tailbone at the top of the bolster. Come into your breathing, in and out through the nose. Good, we're going to stay here for a little while to help the spine naturally lengthen. And in three minutes, we're going to go right into some hip stretches. So let your whole body rest back. Letting yourself go. Shoulder blades are under. The throat is open. And the eyes are relaxed. And as you breathe, feel the breath move through the spine, creating more and more softening of the front body. And as the breath comes in through the nose, draw the breath into the back of the nostrils and into your back. A deeper, deeper breath. Continue to let go and take another minute.
next. We'll gently come into some hip stretches. And of course, if this feels fantastic, continue to rest. We're opening up the hips. We're creating wonderful space in between the diaphragm and the ribs. Now the next stretch is to straighten the left leg out. And then we take the right leg in. Now surely do feel welcome to come down with your low back on the floor. This is a deeper stretch in through the quad. So this will be nice after all your extra walking this morning. Um, but if you do need to have the bum on the floor, that's, that's great. Good. And then come on right into circles. Bending that elbow to draw the knee in. And then the other direction. And then you can hug that right knee in. And now lift the head, take an in-breath. And then exhale and tuck the chin in. Rounding the low back, pull the right knee in as tight as you can. Good chance the left leg might come up or come up off the floor. It's okay if the ankle lifts, you'll get that seesaw action and you'll get more of a stretch in through that left quad. And then release the upper body down. And then hold on behind that right leg. Reach the heel up, pull back from the toes as you reach that right heel out. Extend through the leg. And then as you pull the toes back, reach the heel out. Grab on somewhere on the low leg or the foot as you reach the right leg out and your left leg on the floor is reaching out. Get that right heel reaching out as long as you can and your shoulders are back. Stay with your breathing. And then you can gently release, bend that right leg down. Have both knees bent for a moment again. Let your arms rest to the side and let your tailbone go right into the bolster. Shoulders are free. Just let the weight of the tailbone release on the bolster. And here we go, left leg. Take an in-breath, hug that left knee in. Reach the right leg out. Pull the left leg in snug, a little bit to the outside, and then taking a deep breath. Exhale, tuck your chin and reach that right leg out, keeping the elbow bent as you tuck and lift. Pull in as much as you can. Maybe that right heel comes off the floor, that's okay. Keep that quad stretch. And then breathing in, release the weight of the head down. Grab behind that left leg, reach up through the left heel, pull back from the toes. The elbows bend down to the side and then grab onto the low leg and or that left foot. As you reach the left leg out and pull back from your toes. Keep that right leg reaching. The gaze is to the ceiling so the chin does not tuck. You've got a little gap underneath the neck. As you reach out through the heels and pull the toes back. Breath steady. Keeping that reach out as the toes pull back. And then you can gently bend and release that left leg down. Okay. Now we'll cross the right knee on top of the left. Lift both legs up off the floor and you can hug the knees in. Come on around the front or underneath the legs if you need to. If you can get around front, you'll get a little deeper stretch. Pulling the chest, the knees right into the chest and rib cage. Let your elbows bend so your shoulders can drop back. Nice deep breath. Exhaling. Once again, deep breath. And exhale. And then you can release that right leg. Keep the legs crossed and let your arms rest to the side. You're getting a nice gentle stretch in that right hip. See how much you can feel your low back let go. Everything releasing. 
Now keeping that right knee um, on top of the left and really tight. So you've got them wrapped snugly and you might be able to wrap the right foot just underneath the left calf and then you lift the left foot off the floor, tip to your left and bring your arms out to the side like a T. Drop that right shoulder blade back as you gaze to the right and lengthen through the spine. And as you're gazing to the right, keep the shoulders dropping back. Nice and open through the chest. Steady breath. Again, nice and open. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then turning the head back to the center, draw the heels back up off the floor and hug the legs in, wrapped either behind the knees or in front and bending the elbows to draw the legs in. You can press the head back and the chin is just up so the gaze is towards the ceiling. And then you can gently release that leg down. Let the arms go. Uncross that right leg. And with your feet apart, let your feet release into the floor. Let your tailbone go. Press the shoulder blades under so the neck is long. Breath. And the shoulders are free. Feel the belly rise on your inhale and feel the belly sink on your exhale, causing you to sink further down into the bolster. Staying with your breath. Good, and one more breath, releasing. Good, and now bringing the knees closer together if they're, if they're far apart. And then cross your left knee on top of your right. Now we'll lift the heels up off the floor, hug at the fronts of the knees and pull the legs in. Nice and snug. Bending the elbow tight. Keep the breath steady. Again, pull in as tight as you can. Now you can let that left, let the foot down. Um, and then we're going to tip over to your right and you might lift the heel up off the floor to come to your right as you gaze to your left. So I'm finding I have both heels off the floor as I tip over to the right, getting a great stretch in through that left hip. Let your breath be deep. Let your left shoulder drop back so you're opening up through the chest on that left side. Stay with your breathing. Again, that left shoulder blade was dropped under. Steady breath. Keep that left top hip heavy as you tip and fall to the right side. Drawing the breath down low into the belly to lengthen your spine. And then on your next in-breath, breathe the knees, heels back up off the floor. Hug the legs in, either to the front or behind the knees, pulling in snug. Let the elbows bend. Shoulders are free. 
Nice deep breath. And then you can release and let the legs down. Uncross the arms, uncross the legs. Rather, let the arms uh, relax to the side and have your feet just hip width apart and feel each side of the tailbone sink into the bolster once again. Now, I'd like to take us further into a back arc to teach the shoulder stand. Um, the shoulder stand is done with the legs straight up in the air and a great way to do it more passively is to use the bolster to get that lift. Now the best way to do it is to increase the arc in the back by using the handles at the side of the bolster and pulling the bolster in closer right to the shoulder blades. Now right away you've got more of a lift of the ribs and the feet are naturally apart, the pressed flat, flat on the floor. Now, first of all, feel that lift in the rib cage. So you've got that opening in through the, low, the upper back, rather. So right into the thoracic area. Take three deep breaths in. Keeping the breath steady. Okay, super. Now the next position is to um, press the shoulder blades down and back so they come away from the ears. And then notice if you can pull the bolster in more. I think I, I'm gonna lift my bum up higher and I can come in, I'm gonna go side to side. So I'm wriggling the bolster in further. And now I've got my upper shoulder blades just off the floor. So there's much more of a rib cage lift. So this natural arc will help to bring the, the carotid artery lower and you'll get more of an opening in through the diaphragm and also in through the lungs. The shoulders are resting back and you go into your breathing. You draw the breath down low into the belly and you increase your, it's like you increase the wingspan of your diaphragm. So opening up in through the sides, intercostal muscles, respiratory muscles, and if, it, if you can, take in three deeper breaths, as deep as you can. Stretch in through the lungs. On your exhale, really feel the heels press down. Again, you may feel an increased stretch and it might be right in the low back, that's natural. That is a big part of this stretch because you are getting a back bend. Okay, now we're going to um, draw your right heel up. So you take that right heel in, hug right at the front of the knee and extend your left leg straight out. Keep the foot slightly bent and the heel will be pressing into the floor and the top of the foot will release. Pull that right knee in, and then pull the knee to the outside towards the right rib cage on the outside. And then notice if you can straighten that left leg out a little further, stretching in through that quad. And you're squeezing into that right thigh as you pull the knee to the outside. The bend of the elbows pulling the leg in, your body back, your shoulders back, and your head press back. Take a nice deep breath. Okay, great. Now you can slightly bend that left leg. Press the left foot down in the floor for balance and then pull the right knee in towards the chest, right towards the sternum, middle of the chest, just a little bit to the right and pull the leg in further. So you're going to squeeze right in through the gut as you pull that knee in and the elbows bend. Pull in as much as you can, and the head is pressing back, shoulders are back, and then you can gently release that right leg down. Now, bring your left foot in closer, and you're keeping the knees bent. Let the tailbone be heavy, it'll slide down a little bit, it won't go down more, but it will let down more. 
and you go into your breathing. Keep on breathing in and out through the nose as you let go. on breathing and releasing. Wonderful. Next in breath, you can bend to the left knee in. Hug at the front or the back if you need to. And then take that right leg out. Keep the right leg slightly bent. And the toes will be off the floor, heel on the floor. Pull that left knee to the outside. Let the elbows bend. Pull in. Keeping your breathing steady. Keeping the elbows bending as you pull to the outside. Breath. Pulling in. Really pulling. Good. And then you're going to pull towards the midline more. So come right into the gut. Good. You're pressing into the descending colon as you squeeze in. And the elbows are bent. Shoulders press back. Stay with your breathing. Notice if you can reach that right heel out a little further, sliding it out. Breath. Pull in really snug with that left thigh. Squeezing, elbows bending to pull in. And then you can gently release that left leg down and rest the arms to the side. And the palms are turned up. Once again, the tailbone is heavy and it drops onto that opposite side of your bolster. And let go. Come right into your breath. Stay with your breathing. All right, now for the next position, you're going to walk the heels in closer to the bum and press the heels down and do a slight pelvic tilt, sending the tailbone away. And it's like you're bridging out the tailbone as you press on the insides of the feet. Now the tailbone has lifted a little bit off the bolster. Um, you might still be on the bolster, that's fine. You can get that line right in through the quads, getting a great stretch in through the thighs as the knees press away. Keep pressing on the insides of the feet and all four corners of the feet. Make sure the shoulder blades stay back and your spine is open at the front. Keep on pressing into the feet to send the knees away. Stay with your breathing. and then relax, let go. Let the weight of the tailbone come all the way down and let it arc and drop to the opposite side. And breath. Keep letting go. And now one more time, press into the feet Peel the tailbone out and up as much as you can, possibly off the bolster this time. Keep pressing on the insides of the feet. Feel the line from the knees right to the back of the shoulder blades. The chin is not tucked. In fact, you can press the head back gently. This is a very active pose. You're pulling the rib cage up and in in order to stabilize the spine from the belly. And you keep sending the tailbone away. Keeping your breathing steady. And again, the head is pressing back and the shoulder blades are under. Stay with the breath. 
breath. And then you can slowly lower down, release the weight of the tailbone onto the bolster. Fantastic. Now we're going to take the right knee up. Hold on behind the knee this time and bring the heel up into the air. Come on into twin circles, letting the bend of the elbow pull that right knee in. And other direction. And now you can just pull that right knee in a little more. Take your opposite left hand to hold on to that right low leg or possibly the right foot. And then pulling that right leg down, coming into half a baby, half a happy baby. <laughs> and then you want to keep that left foot pressing down into the floor. The left arm comes overhead and you reach through that left arm. Let that right knee press down. It's going to hit the bolster probably. And it's coming down towards your right armpit. And you reach out with that left arm. Spread the fingers as you reach that left arm out. Breath, opening the chest. Press the left foot down into the floor for balance. And also to stretch that left thigh. And stay breath. Breath. Long through the torso with the reach of that left arm out. And then you can gently let the left arm come down to the side of the body. And then take the left hand to grab onto that right foot. Tip over to your left as much as you can. I'm going to demonstrate bringing the foot all the way over to the left. And then take the left arm out and up. And then just come on on the inside arch of that right foot. Now, if this is too much of a stretch in through the hip, you can always bring your foot right to the top of the knee and then just see how far down you can drop. That's really nice through the right shoulder. And that right arm is back. You can gaze to the ceiling and a little bit further back. So again, maybe that right leg is up. You're reaching out. Just notice what is the best stretch. Let your right shoulder drop back as you gaze to the right. Breathing in and out through the nose. Do keep that right shoulder blade dropped back. And then you can breathe in. Hug. Pull that knee in with the right waist and then pull the right knee in one more time. Give a good squeeze right to the front. And then release that right leg down. Relax the right leg. And once again, just feel the weight of the bum right on the top of the bolster. Now you can take your left leg in. Hug in nice and tight. Bending the knee to the outside. And the right foot is pressing down into the floor. Now take the left low leg or the left foot. Use your right hand to pull that leg down. Bending to the outside. Half a happy baby. You might need to bend your right foot in closer to press that right foot down so you can help through that right quad stretch. Pressing the right foot down into the floor. That left knee bending to the outside. And your shoulders are back. Keep that right foot pressing down for the stretch. Now you can bring that right foot across. So either bent and tipping all the way to the right and then gazing towards the left. Or of course you can bend that right knee and bring the right ankle to the top of that right Ah, oh, shin, so that you can have support for that left leg. In either position, keep your left shoulder pressing back and gaze to your left. Keep on dropping that left shoulder back.
And a couple more breaths. Keeping that left knee dropping. Good, and then on your next in-breath, breathing in, draw that left leg back up. Hug the left knee into the outside, keep that right foot pressing down, let your shoulders drop back, and then you can gently release that left leg down. And relax the arms to the side. Once again, the tailbone is heavy. Now the final position we'll do in this position is to take your legs straight up in the air or bent and then have the balls of the feet together. The heels are apart to open up through the outside hips. Now reach the heels over towards the head side of the body coming into a plow action as you reach your heels out. Then grab onto the backs of the legs as you pull the toes down and reach your heels out. Your shoulders are back and as you lengthen through the backs of the legs, let your core really contract, pull in, and hug a little bit more in the backs of the legs if you can. And if you're up in the air, if you want to bend your knees a little bit more to get more of a stretch right down into the hamstrings, that will help to get the top of the, the hamstrings. And, but do keep pulling the toes back to get that stretch right through the backs of the legs. And you're breathing steady. Keep on breathing. Breath. Okay, and then you can just let your heels come down and release the legs. Relax the arms to the side. Now feel the wonderful stretching through your low back. You'll find if you keep the knees bent, you'll get more of a release of the low back. And if you'd like to straighten the legs, this will give you a little stretch through the top of the thighs and also a contraction and a tightening of the low back to increase the stimulation there in the low back of the nerves. And in either position, let your feet roll out. Completely let go. Stay here for three minutes as you let go. And as I leave you in silence, just come right into your breath. Releasing for two more minutes, staying with your breathing.
One more minute of breathing. <clears throat> A couple more minutes, or sorry, a couple more breaths to finish the posture. Very nice. And bending knees if the legs are straight, and then having your feet hip width apart. We're going to very gently release from this pose. And the first thing we'll do is pull both knees in once again. Pull the knees in wide. Now we're hugging at the front of the knees so you can get a good compression right into your low back. Now you can hug, you can keep the hug at the backs of the knees um, and that will help you to get your shoulders back more. That might be a little easier. And then when you bring your, uh, where, if you're at the front, bring, do bring your legs behind and then bring the heels over and then straightening somewhat out. So you're going to keep a little bit of the bend in the backs of the knees. And you reach the heels out as you pull back from your toes. And your breathing is steady. Now do a tiny rock side to side. Getting each side of the low back pressing down. You might notice a big difference in the sides. I always like to notice that. Just notice where the tension is and then you can, whenever you do need to stretch, spend a bit more time stretching on that tight side. And then you can take the knees together and just hug the knees in right from the front or behind. One more deep breath. And then you can gently release down. Now with the heels on the floor, just before we change position, so noted here, this is very much like doing a shoulder stand when you did the legs up in the air like this. Um, um, this would be the next best way to do shoulder stand. Um, shoulder stand is where you have your legs up in the air and your hands are right on your back. So I just did a partial. And for many people, it's not possible. It's just not going to work with blood pressure, um, with body weight, with the way the body is shaped. And often it, it creates quite a bit of discomfort for the breathing. So this is a good way to still get the upside down, which is the blood return, um, the venous blood return. And also this is very good for blood pressure. Anything that you have your legs up in the air creates a relaxation response. So this is a really good way to get a shoulder stand without committing to lifting your body up off the floor. Now we're going to come out of the pose by pressing the feet down have the feet just hip width apart, lift the bum, and then you can slide your bolster out. And take your bolster to the side and have it handy. And then let your whole body rest back <coughs> so that you can feel the weight of the body releasing. 
and your shoulders let go. Now, you might start to notice that more of your body can come back into contact with the floor. That's one of the advantages of getting this assisted length of your back. So do just notice if you can feel more of your spine in contact with the floor. Tuning into that shift if it's there. And then do enjoy the relaxed effect of the length of the vertebrae. You've released the nerve endings in the spine. And then you can take your bolster right underneath your knees. <laughs> And just having these bent here. And then you can bend your knees and take them right to the top of the bolster. Take the arms up overhead, reach through the fingertips, and spread the fingers. Have your shoulder blades under. And then take the arms out to the side like a T. And then bend both knees over to your left. Knees are apart, feet apart. And press that top right knee down. Take your left ankle, take it above the right knee, and then drop over to that left side. Let your right shoulder drop back. Stay with your breathing. Nicely opening. Take in two more deep breaths. And then you can breathe in, draw all the way back up. And then you can uncross that left leg, having these wide feet wide, breathe in, and exhale over to the right. Press that top left knee away. Really tipping over. And then you can take that right ankle, take it above the left knee and pulling down. Lengthening out of that left side. Nice deep breaths. Okay, sorry, I just got lost in the pose. Breathe right back up, uncross that right leg, and take the soles of the feet together and let the knees flay out, coming into an inner thigh stretch. And now you wriggle the shoulder blades under the body, squeeze them together by pressing the elbows back, and then soften, and let the shoulders come apart so your chest is open and you're just letting your arms rest in the bent position to the side. And once again, as I leave you in silence, go right into your breath.
letting yourself go. And taking two more minutes to breathe and release. On your next in-breath, take a deeper breath. Let the belly rise. And completely let go on the exhale. Now, gently take the hands behind the head. Elbows bend back. Bend over to your left side and press the right elbow back. So you're doing a wonderful side stretch out of that right side. By bending both elbows back, you open the ribs. Think of an expanding fan of the ribs on that right side. Nice deep breath. Good, and then you can breathe in, draw all the way back to the middle. Come on over to the right side, press that left elbow back. Open the chest and the rib cage. Fanning open that left side of the intercostals, those ribs on the side. Those area, that area is just like stretching gills as you breathe deep. One more breath. Good, and then you can come on back to your center. And then with the hands still behind the head, take an in-breath, and then take the elbows slightly forward, exhale, and tuck your chin. And just looking down as you really tuck the chin in. Nice deep breath. And then you can slowly lower, coming all the way down. And then one more time, Take a breath in, come back to the middle, and now we're gonna to turn to your left, looking towards that left armpit, and tuck your chin in. Breathe in and out through the nose, get a really strong tuck there. And then breathe into your middle, and come on over to the right. Once again, really tuck the chin. Breathe in, in and out through the nose. And then you can come on back to your center and let the arms rest to the side. And once again, completely let go. Do let your shoulders release back.
Keep on releasing everything. And then very gently, just take your hands right on the insides of the thighs and using the palms and the fingertips, rub right from the inside knees, if you can get your hands there, and then right up to the very top of the inner thighs. These muscles are very cordy. They're very, very much like guitar strings. And you've got layers of them. And some of them have a very strong edge. Some are short, some are long and thin. And by pressing them together, you can help to release the endpoints. Just um, getting that kneading action, that kneading action. And that will help to really let the inner thighs go. Now, you don't have to do this, but this is something that I do a lot in Thai massage, is I take my hands and I just cut them. And then I press um, and I go up and down really fast like this. Right on the inner thighs. And I would recommend doing one on each, uh, one hand on each inner thigh and start at the top and work down and then come back up. And then you can relax the hands, let your arms rest at the side, and just feel that increased stimulation in through your thighs. Completely let go. Wow, it's quite an effect. So you've got a lot of increased stimulation there in the inner muscles. Take a moment to let go again. And then very gently, draw the knees up to the ceiling and just have the feet flat on the bolster. Take a moment for your low back to let go. And then straighten your legs right out over the bolster. And coming right into Shavasana, lying relaxation. Let everything go. Finally, just take care of a couple things. Make sure you're warm enough, so if you need to put a sweater on or if you need to take, um, take a blanket, just notice if there's anything you need to do. Stay with your breath. Good. Completely letting go. And feel how you can release back into the floor more and more. The shoulders resting back. The space in between your shoulder blades releasing. The neck is long. The head is heavy. And you feel that natural gap right underneath your neck. Feel the feet rolled out in relaxation. Heels heavy. 
and the backs of the knees supported. And do any little wiggling, jiggling, anything you need to do to get into contact with the floor and more. And completely let go as I leave you in silence. And now with awareness on your breathing, take in a deeper breath. <clears throat> Completely exhale. And once again, and this time stretch the arms up overhead, reach through the fingertips, spread the fingers, <clears throat> and then extend the arms super long. Now lift the, um, press the shoulder blades under and keep reaching out through the backs of the arms. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then you can let the arms come on right back down to the side of the body. Bend the knees, take the feet right to the top of the bolster. And then flatten your low back to a small pelvic tilt as you press the feet into the bolster. And the shoulders let go, you're uninvolved. And then relax. 
Do that one more time. Just press into the feet, flatten the back, and then release. Great. Now you can gently roll over to your right side. Take your right hand under for a pillow and let yourself release onto that side. Let your body go again. You can tune into all the effects of the poses we've done. And then on your next in-breath, push up. Come on up to seated position. We'll take a moment to sit and to let go and just to feel all the effects of the poses we've done. Now you can feel free to have the eyes open or closed. And as you feel the length in through the spine, just notice the shoulders are back. The truest posture, the best posture, is to have a chin slightly back so that your um, the neck isn't forward, and that will help to give that space um, just in between the diaphragm and the ribs, and that will give you the, a fuller breath. So throughout the day, we tend to get more focused like this, and so if you can practice using those back muscles, which is how we began, when I had you doing this kind of um, activation where I had you really be lifting, and pulling the toes out, reaching the heels out, and then lifting right from the low back and, and this kind of action that we did. So that helps to get the muscles right along the spine to lift so you can create more length and then you can get more of a lift right through the whole spine and in through the rib cage. Okay, very nice. We'll bring our hands together and bow namaste. Namaste. Lovely. Have a fantastic day. And um, I'm here if you have any questions. And feel free to come tonight for the 645 Extremely Challenging class. Um, 